Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, I want to explore another 2016 feature, and that's kind of the new updated knowledge articles. So for those of you who've had CRM online uh, 2015 with Spring Update 1, you probably have already or are familiar with the concept of being able to integrate a Paratrue subscription uh, knowledge base into Microsoft Dynamics CRM. One of the things that they've done as part of the new Interactive Service Hub capabilities is they've created a new knowledge article or a new knowledge base article entity. Now this is completely independent of the existing articles that you already have. And so that's going to be something that as an organization, you're going to have to talk a little bit about is, do you want to continue to use kind of your current article situation, or do you want to maybe migrate or start incorporating some of the new not integrated knowledge capabilities that you have within CRM? A lot of the functionality is very similar to what you would see from within Paratrue in regards to how the articles can be created. It has kind of a new updated WYSIWYG editor that you can use to edit the articles and and define different things, but it also gives you a few more publishing options. It gives you the capabilities to use it within CRM. So from the case entity, you can do knowledge searches where you can actually search these knowledge articles directly from cases, and then obviously attach them right from there, much like you would do from the integrated knowledge search within Parature. Now, the other aspect of this is you also would have the capabilities if you wanted to, to publish this information out externally. So if you were doing self-service for customers, they would have the capabilities to work with that information as well. And so that's one of the things that we want to show you just a little bit today is just introduce you to kind of the new knowledge article aspect of what's available from a CRM 2016. So if we have hop back into Microsoft CRM, we can go ahead and kind of look at this functionality. Now, if you remember, historically, all of our knowledge articles have kind of taken place or all of our article editing and stuff has taken place through articles. One of the things that you'll notice when you go into a 2016 environment is when you go into the traditional articles area, they will actually show you an option here that says that we have new kind of knowledge functionality that you can use and they give you the capabilities to basically go to it. And what this is gonna link you to is Interactive Service Hub. And so if you remember, like I said, we talked a little bit about Interactive Service Hub in a previous video. So in here, I can go ahead and click on access it here, and this is going to launch me into the Interactive Service Hub. Now remember, that's a separate URL than what I would have for my normal CRM environment. So it's going to have kind of updated content and, and updated information from there. If I come into kind of the main area, uh, one of the things that you'll see is there's different dashboard items that we talked about. There will be dashboard items that are specific to different roles. So in this case, this is the knowledge manager dashboard. So this is basically going to show you some of the articles that have currently been created and are in a proposed state. It's going to have articles that are in a draft state that are still waiting for review. So people still need to go in and review those individual items. Um, if you, you also have the concept with here to expire articles, based based upon maybe specific timeframes and items. So this really is designed to give you kind of a, a really deep look into what's specifically happening with knowledge articles in your organization. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and go up into your navigation area in under service, and this will take you into the knowledge articles for your organization. And so these are all of the knowledge articles that have currently been created within the application themselves. And most of these obviously are in a, in a draft status. And so you still have kind of the same publishing methodology that you would see in other facets of the application. When you want to create a new article, you can go ahead and click on new, and this will open up kind of your article editor. Now, one of the couple things that you're going to notice is from an aspect of, of working with this is it's automatically going to have um, the major version number and the minor version numbers. Those items are automatically going to be locked. So there is a way that you can kind of update those versions and create different versions and we'll show you how some of that conceptually works when you're going through the application itself. The languages allow you to kind of compose it within a base language and one of the nice things that you have with these knowledge articles is now you have different language pack options that you can use for translation services. So there's a separate kind of language interface that you can use to translate these articles into different scenarios based upon different regions and demographics within those items as it as you're working through them. And then each article obviously will have kind of a status reason that you can modify based upon specific scenarios and items that you're working with. So we would come in here and we would give it kind of a, a title, obviously just like any situation that you would do. In this case, I'll go ahead and just call this sample article. 
if you want to, obviously, when people are searching for this within the interface and you want them to be able to use specific keywords within the or uh, within that search to make it easier to find this individual situation based upon what it's tied to, obviously, just like you had with other versions of knowledge articles and other knowledge base applications, I can go ahead and enter some keywords into this. So we'll do sample. Now, in the description field, the description field, if you're going to publish this information out externally, the description field is what's going to allow you this information to be searched via the internet, like a Google or via Bing type situation. And so when somebody locates this through an externally facing portal, this is what's going to tell you specifically what this article entails. And typically you're limited to default 155 characters within this scenario, but obviously this could be adjusted as needed based upon your situation. So this is gonna be critical from an aspect of allowing this article to be exposed if you choose to expose it externally to kind of an external pace facing portal. So I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick and you'll see a few different things that show up within the command bar now. So one of the things that you'll see if I come up here is there are actually three different business process flows that have been in it, that have been introduced as part of the new knowledge article scenarios. There's kind of the new knowledge article process that you can use for kind of an approval process as you're moving forward. There's an expired knowledge article process that you can use if you have articles that meet a certain criteria and now are expired. And then there's different translation processes if you're trying to translate articles into the um, into specific use cases and, and different situations but you'll notice that you have kind of a very specific scenario where you can move things to queues you can approve articles publish articles archive articles so on and so forth from an editing standpoint this now has kind of a fully functional WYSIWYG editor that you can use to insert specific pieces or items into the article itself now this is completely allows you to go in and, and type in information and edit information based upon your specific uh, needs and items as you're working through. You actually can go in and edit the HTML information if you want to based upon specific scenarios so you can modify that. It also allows you to incorporate article information from maybe other applications and other items as you're working through. So this would now give you the capabilities to go in if you had like article information that you brought in from like a Word document or something like that, you could go ahead and copy and paste that information from a Word document directly into an article that you would be working with and pull that information in from there. So for example, if I had some information that I was working with in Word, I could edit that information in Word. I could now come into here and I could paste that information right from a Word document. And now I could update that information as I'm working through it from that standpoint. I also have the capabilities within this new editor to insert images. So I can browse out to specific images. I can post out what I want for that individual image. I I can define information in regards to the text, the height, the weight, vertical spacing, horizontally spacing, all of that information. I can specify target URLs for that information. All of these items can basically be defined from within this article as you're working through this information and moving forward. So this gives you kind of a lot of, of flexibility within that editor that we just didn't necessarily have in previous versions of the application when you start thinking about some of the traditional knowledge base options as you're working through. Within your business process flows, you now have the capabilities to define what it is that you want to do. So in this case, maybe I want to associate this article with my default subject. I want to go ahead and mark it as completed from a review standpoint. Now I can go ahead and advance to the next stage in my option. And now within my option for my stages, I can define what I want to do here. I can then submit this to somebody. So if I were to now come back into my article scenarios, and I have items that have been kind of submitted for approvals within those situations. If I come back into my knowledge base uh, option and I click in my knowledge base manager, now I can see kind of different statuses of items that have kind of come through those items and see specifically where they're at. I could then go ahead and go into my specific article and now if I'm ready to publish this article, I could go ahead and click on publish. And you'll notice from a publishing standpoint, it's not just straight publishes. It's now when do you want to publish this? So I have the capabilities to specify if I want this to be published somewhere out into the future. Um, I have the capabilities then to specify when I want that to be published from an application perspective. Um, I also have the capabilities if I want to just go ahead and publish it now. Um, and then once I publish it now, I also have the scenario to 
specify kind of what status I want that to have when it is published. I can set expiration dates and I can define what I want to do from an expiration standpoint. So if I only want this article to be valid for a specific date and time and period, I can specify that. And then I can also specify what happens when that article does hit expiration. Do I want it to be noted as expired? Do I want it to be moved into archive and archive that record for other situations? Um, what exactly do I want to do within that scenario? And then I also have options to kind of explore what I want to do from kind of a translation standpoint. Point. And then I can go ahead and publish this from that standpoint. Now that was really meant just to be kind of a quick little overview. As you can see through the, you know, through this particular video, there's a lot that we could do. We could spend a couple hours just talking about some of the new functionality and some of the publishing options and embedding and those kind of different situations. So depending upon popularity and suggestions, you know, I'd love to delve in more for it, but I at least wanted to give you kind of a quick little overview so you're familiar with what it is and how it kind of compares to what's currently been there from an application perspective. So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek, and I just want to say, hey, thank you very much, everybody. Take care and have a good one.